The photo you're seeing was shot at ISO 10,000 by this camera, the Canon 6D Mark II, which I have professionally been using for the last two years, and I can safely say I know enough about it that this is the last video you need to watch on the topic. It packs a 26-megapixel full-frame sensor capable of shooting at 6.5 frames a second for about 4 to 5 seconds, and it sounds like this. But here we get to the first thing you need to watch out for, which is, if you're shooting through your live view, with Servo AF on, it will sound like this. That's 4 frames a second. And it only happens when you're shooting through live view with Servo AF on. And it's not something you need to worry about unless you absolutely need to be shooting in those settings. Its shutter speed goes from 30 seconds to 1 4,000th of a second, so since it doesn't have 1 8,000th, you can't be shooting at f1.8 or lower in direct sunlight. What you can do though is shoot at ISO 50, which I never did myself. With that aside, this camera's ISO goes from 50 all the way to 102,400. This would normally hint that the camera is good in low light which it absolutely is. It beats many other cameras in high ISOs. For example, if you compare this to a 5D Mark IV, when you go to 32 or 6400 and higher, it will give you higher perceived resolution because the 5D will go soft before this camera does. I also got to compare this camera to a Sony a7R 3 and that camera did way worse because of its high megapixel count. But what people say about this camera is that it has a lower dynamic range than its competitors at lower ISOs, which I would say if you really push your files, you can notice a little bit of that, but it's definitely not something to worry about and most of the time you're gonna be shooting at higher ISOs, in which field this camera catches up and does better the higher you go. I've shot products, concerts, architecture, pretty much anything and I never really had complaints about the dynamic range. Moving on to the autofocus performance, I would say this camera does pretty well. It doesn't have IAF, but the face tracking works smoothly and the viewfinder tends to focus on faces and sometimes eyes when you're shooting portraits. But here we get to a con. The 45 cross type autofocus points are all crammed up in the middle because that system was originally made for a crop sensor camera, which I think was the ADD. So to focus on the very far corners of your frame, you're either gonna have to do the thing, which you're probably already used to, or you can use your LCD, which has almost full coverage. Why that's good is because it's gonna come in handy in shooting video, which this camera does at 1080p 60 max. It also does 4K time lapses, but as far as video goes, I wouldn't say it's the best. The 1080p kind of looks soft, which I found you can fix by just adding around 40% or so sharpness. You just don't want to overdo it and it would look fine. But if you know you're going to be stabilizing your videos a lot or maybe cropping them to double as an Instagram story or TikTok, then it will not be enough. 4K will surely do better. But also when you export 4K as 1080p, it looks sharper than native 1080p does, especially from the 6D for whatever reason. All in all, I think the full HD in this camera is gonna be plenty for most people. And come to think about it, none of my clients ever really complained about my videos being soft, even though I zoomed in and stabilized them a lot. The only person who complained is me. And the same thing goes for the headphone jack, which this camera is missing. So you're gonna have to rely on your trusty levels if you use manual audio recording, that is. Another thing you need to know before you buy this camera is that any mode except for manual and the custom modes will shoot in fully automatic mode. So if you're in aperture priority or shutter priority, the camera is still gonna shoot auto unless you put it in manual and then I guess you can do auto ISO, but no auto shutter speed or aperture. Knowing this, the video also doesn't perform very well in low light, but in general, the files handle color grading pretty well, even though it doesn't shoot raw video. Last but not least, we have the build quality of the camera, which I think is very well done. The camera can be gripped really well. The buttons are well laid out. You can reach them easily and you can get used to them easily as well. Also, the buttons never failed as well as their paint. It never really wore off or anything like that. And in general, this applies to the entire camera. It's a reliable camera. The fully articulating LCD screen is clear and responsive. I also like how the mode dial has a button which doesn't allow you to accidentally rotate it. 
It also has two custom modes, C1 and C2, which are one more than I typically need, so you're not missing out on a C3. Being 750 grams, this could be considered a heavy camera, but I never really saw it as such. I simply like that you can feel its existence and you could definitely knock someone out with it if you really wanted to. It's a reliable workhorse. If you ask it to do something it can do, it will do it every time. So who is this camera for and should you pick it over the 80D 7D Mark II or maybe the 5D Mark III? I would only pick the 80D if I had a lot of crop sensor lenses, the 7D if I only shot birds or sports and I needed the extra speed, but that camera doesn't even have a touchscreen and there's also the 5D Mark III which I would only pick if I only did studio shoots and didn't need anything else from it. So I would still pick this camera any time of the day against all of the other cameras and I would suggest you go full frame, wait a little bit, gather up some money and buy the 6D instead of the 80D for example because moving to full frame has been a good jump for me and it's gonna be for you as well. But still the 80D is pretty good especially if you just want a camera for fun. Watch this video over here if you want to know more about it and thank you.